Dude, um, <laughs> you got but, a, you know, you have I, a flip phone, dude. Can I see that? Sure, if you want. Who is that? Sorry, I'm on a podcast. Who is this? Yes? You have the wrong number. <laughs> it's okay. Wow, a wrong number even. That's crazy, dude. Where do you get these? Well, you first have to go back in time. No, uh, <laughs> oh, you know, at a PC Richards or a uh, Wiz. <laughs> the Wiz. Nobody even knows what Wiz is. Remember Wiz? Yeah, no, these are great, though. That's great. It's not on the web at all, so it's off the grid. You have nothing. You can't do anything with nothing, it. Nothing. Except text, phone calls. Text. Text and phone calls. Phone calls. Yeah. Yeah, maybe if the wind's right, you can send a picture. That's about it. Yeah, baby. We're starting the podcast right now. We're back. You know what, dude? Live. Welcome, everybody, to the show. YKW. I started the social media podcast. <laughs> the back. The YKWD podcast. YKWD's back again. Old school, back in the day, where it all started. Before them all, I YKWD. 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 This podcast is so fun and crazy. It has no rules. Shut up. You're no. ruining this. Where's the ball? Damn it. Sorry, it's a comedy podcast. This isn't NPR. That's what this podcast does. Is there any better show? This is the original. Original. What's up, everybody? It's Robert Kelly. Go to patreon.com slash Robert Kelly if you want to support it. If not, that just hit the subscribe button. Click it right now before you watch anymore. There's a lot of sneaky little suckers. You watch the show and then you don't subscribe. I don't care if you don't like it. Just hit the subscribe. It's free. Why don't you give? And then the universe will give back to you. Subscribe, like, comment, all that jazz. Uh, we have a great show today. I mean, this is... Uh, I'm very excited. I was excited. I get excited about all the shows. But this one I was really excited about. Dave Attell, thank you for coming on You Know What Dude podcast. Hey, Bobby, it's, yep. been, it's been a while. And I got to tell you, I like this reboot, this <laughs> new format. It's just... Uh, Mono a mono, yeah. And I see you're 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 definitely dressed up for it. Well, I, I like wanted that. to be dressed up for this. Nice. And I wanted to give you something a little different. I didn't want to. I wanted to throw you off a little bit. I didn't want you to come up and be like, "Oh, same old dead no. Bob." I wanted you to come up and go, "Is he on Yellowstone?" I was going to say, "Is he the new John Dutton?" <laughs> <laughs> you kind of dressed for a, a poker tournament, but and, um, and you're dressed for an Antifa rally. Well, and between the two of us, <laughs> we're headed to the border. <laughs> <We're> headed- <laughs> We'll be right back. Now, hit that subscribe button. <laughs> Come on. You heard the man. <laughs> Dave, you've managed, first of all. <clears throat> yes. You're, you're one of the guys, when people say uh, to me, uh, funniest you, but then I can back it up. Because most people say, oh, funniest guy, but you, Patrice, I would think oh, wow. um, Colin, Colin Quinn. Yes. But you have one of the funniest jokes. And I know I've... When you tell a joke over years and years, over this is one of my favorite things that's ever happened at a comedy club. Yeah. It's you. But I know I've probably enhanced it and made it different, you know, to embellish. Yeah, because I'm a comic. And, uh, yeah. Maybe it didn't work one time and I just kind of <laughs> said something. <laughs> I hear you. But you said, dude, and I, I'll try to not kill it. And if I yeah. fuck it up, I'm sorry. Uh, at the, the Black Night, Sunday night, you remember doing it? Uh, I don't think it was called that, but yeah. No, that's what we called it behind the, their backs. In the 50s, maybe. Dark night. That. Yes. Yeah, always packed. Like a Mo Better Monday or something <laughs> like that. or It was, uh, it was Freak was it? Night, something. Chocolate something. Chocolate yes. Sundays. Chocolate Sundays. Chocolate Sundays. Yes. Um, I don't know why white people don't name our shows. <laughs> you know, like Banana Tuesdays. Mm. Uh, uh, oatmeal. Good Credit. Uh, good uh, Credit. Thursday. <laughs> Still Married mm-hmm. Thursdays. <laughs> <laughs> you really took a, a, a turn here. Sorry, no, go I ahead. Apologize. Let's. We gotta go. <laughs> but you. <laughs> I, okay. I so was that? It was at an, an inclusive. Was show. that? It was at the inclusive show. Yes. And I mean, look at Chocolate Sundays at Boston was packed all the time. Yeah. And it was just killers, right? Mm. It was kind of scary. It to was tough. There. Tough to follow for sure. Tough. I mean, talent. Ugh. I mean, uh, Patrice, Will. So was, many great acts. So many great acts were just, and they'd always be like, "Look, man." Come over. Yeah. You'd, you'd be very like, cool about that. All right. But I would get nervous. Oh, I was terrified. Terrified. Because I felt I felt that um, 
first of all, the crowd themselves were promised something, right? Which was like a, a night of of great comedy, right? Or no, a night a, a night of a certain type of comedy, yeah. And then we kind of horned in on it, you yeah. know, like we gentrified the show. And I didn't like, I felt bad for them, but then I also felt bad for me because I was like. Mm-hmm. Cracking, cracking that crowd. Like if you did it, yeah. you were smiling for a week. If yep. you didn't, you like were basically, you know, it, it, it was a real humbler. I used to call it. Like what a humbling that was. It would make you question what you're doing. Oh, just everything about yourself. But they, I, I kind of disagree with us. They would take. They would be like, "Yo, man, come over and do it," mm-hmm. and they would, they would put you to the test. Yes. Like okay. You're Bobby. You're supposed to be funny as shit. You do good on the these shows. Mm-hmm. Come over on Sunday. We'll give you a spot. And they would. I remember when they put me up my first time. They kept bumping me, bumping me, bumping me. And then at the end, they're going up last. After I mean, people were murdering. Oh, for sure. And then they went. All right, boom. Good night. <sighs> and talent went back up. You guys, that was great. And they turned the lights up. He's like, yo, 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 wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. They did like a gimmick. Uh-huh. One more. We got one more. Yeah. Turn those lights down. I was like, no, 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 no. Huh. And they brought me up, mm-hmm. and I did well. Thank God. Yeah. But it was a like that first thirty seconds. Oh. Was tough. But you came in. Yeah. And you did this joke. Oh. You, you walked in much like you know you you yeah. dressed you didn't you know with Fubu you, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean you weren't dressed in all blue yeah <laughs> you uh you came in you go you just went right into it right you go my father does things people don't do anymore do you remember this joke. No. My father does things people don't do anymore. He can shoe a horse. People don't shoe horses anymore. They take cars. My father can milk a cow. They don't milk cows anymore. <laughs> they just get milk from the store. He can get a, get a hook of pregnant, kick it down the flight of stairs, and blame it on the coloreds. People don't blame <laughs> things on the coloreds anymore. I said that? Dude, the place, wow. there was a second of... No wonder I'm out of the presidential race. <laughs> Damn it. Dude. The place exploded. They did? Buddy, Oof. they <laughs> exploded so hard. I mean, people, you know, running out. Like, what the f*** is that? Uh-huh. It, you killed so hard, and it was so dangerous to me. Yeah. And then you went on with your act, and you just murdered for the rest of your set. Well, you caught me on a great one, because I remember so many... That one really was a... Uh, and they were right. They're like, do you think you could do these shows? And I was like, I don't think so, but I got to try now, because <laughs> it was really a test. It was a test. And I remember one time... I was like, I'll just do some crowd work. Look at talent. He's doing great. He's just talking to these people. And yeah. like, you know, so I'm like, hey, lady. And they all like, I don't know how they did it. Five women turned their seats around. <laughs> like, I didn't even know the seats moved. They like basically got up, took their seat and turned it facing the other way. I was like, wow. I was like, you know, I got to give them like synchronized, you know, like they really were like, this is tough. Yeah. You know, I've never seen that at a, uh, uh, what you would call it, college gig, you know? So You remember colleges, man? Yeah, these are all like uh, you know. It's kind of good to like, I guess, revisit some of these these gigs that we had to do. That like, you know, I was never a big college act. I assume from Boston that that you played uh, way more colleges than I ever did. I did. That was like that was when colleges, when you could make a living doing colleges. Yeah, a good you, living. Yeah, too. you can make a real. You may be getting thousands of dollars just to travel the country doing colleges. I that did NACA do a lot. thing. We would talk about that all the time. Did the NACA this guy's thing, in NACA, yeah. and yeah. this guy did this. And you where know. are you from? I'm from Long Island. So. You're from Long Island. So we don't have we have community colleges. No, we have Hofstra. <laughs> but uh, I remember in the Boston I area. Did well, in the Boston area, it was always like. You know, this guy's big at NACA. And we know a lot of guys together. You know, yeah. Anthony Clark. Anthony Clark. Dane. All these different people were like huge college acts. So, you know. Anthony Clark was probably one of the funniest guys to ever come out of Boston. True. And people don't know who he is. And it makes me sad. It's, it's, uh, it is definitely like another one of those of like, you know, generational things of where like, I remember seeing him before he was famous. Yeah. During during while he was famous, and he always was just a gifted performer. You gifted. Know? Yeah. Sometimes when you don't have to work that hard for it, it yeah, you up, true. I think, you know what I mean? It feels like he always like, you know, like um, like you know how like a lot of guys like they might be headlining, but they kind of still have the feel of like you know like you know this guy's not really comfortable headlining. Like he always seems like he's the closer. You know, he yeah. is the final. He's the he's the act. Yeah. So, you know, he would walk in. To the remember the comedy connection in Faneuil Hall? You ever yeah, that? I love that club. One of my no the best rooms ever. Yeah, and he would walk in when we were all coming up and just did murder. Yeah, like I've never seen somebody murder. I think Boston, um, like when you talk about like hard gigs, like 
being uh, and this has been talked about ad nausea by ad nausea. New York comics talking about going to Boston in the eighties and you know early nineties how difficult it was for us yeah. to break into that local scene and it was just like it really was uh, pretty much everything you've heard like right. the local locals and I'm talking the legends you know like the Lenny Clark's and all those guys were still all in town there yeah and th those guys could just show up at any minute and just. Hey, you don't mind if I do a little time? I know. And you're like, yeah, why not? Oof. And you don't know that guy that well. And yeah. then you realize that these guys are like killers. You killers, know, like yeah. there's no following that guy. Right. You know? There's Lenny right now. He's, He's out front. He's going to do a spot at the cellar. <laughs> um, but when you moved to New York, I remember um, you came here. It's like a wave of uh, Boston guys came down, like refugees. It was <laughs> <laughs> you came down. Yeah, we were, we were in comedy and richers. Yeah. You guys came down. <laughs> it, was, and, it was Dane. Then Pat Burr, then Patrice, then me. But before you guys, it was, uh, you know, um, uh, what's his name? There was a couple of guys that came in before you guys, too. Who? Oh. Um, and then Gallman. Gallman came, too. Right. Okay. Well, you guys came down, and, like, you guys had all that. Uh, I think you guys had more road experience than a lot of us did. You, you know, know what we did? did? We were in Boston. We stayed there until we could had, an, like, 45 minutes mm -hmm. of, like, killer stuff yeah and then we came here as the new guys well why did you guys come here if you were making so much money up there like how because you, we because you the, saw, the, saw the future right no because the guys that were there tony v's lenny clark steve mm -hmm. sweeney's they weren't leaving oh okay you understand so there's nowhere to go so we're not gonna bump i never knew that you're not That's gonna bump tony v out of his headline spot mm -hmm. there's, there was we had to get the fuck out we had to go because um there's nowhere to go they weren't leaving. That was Sweeney and Gavin and, but, you know, but Kevin But before you Knox. guys was, uh, you know, uh, Nick DiPaolo and Louie. Nick, and those yeah, that was, the, yeah, exactly. Those, those were the first guys that, they were like my, my generation of comedy. Yeah. So I was like, wow, Rogan, these guys are, Rogan from Spartan. Rogan, these yeah. guys, I was like, these guys are way better. They're like, just like, they're better at this. Like, they have done different, you know, like, I think... I didn't understand it until I was playing at a Chinese restaurant in Boston. I was like, yeah. I get it now. Oh, I cool, get what cool. you guys went through. We're, we the went, Lao. we're like the Navy SEALs. Or the, yes. We're the, we're the f top tier. Mm -hmm. And then New York Comics, we felt like we're the Army. You guys were like or the, the Marines. Like, like in the movie The Warriors, you were the Warriors. Yeah, we were the yeah. Warriors. We were the uh, you were who the Thin Lizzies. <laughs> yeah, we were the, the orphans. The orphans. Remember that? <laughs> yes. What a we, we thought we were bigger than we were, dude. Yeah. I don't know how old you are, but I would. I'm I would, very old. I guess this is for maybe Colin too, but like I watched that movie. I love that movie. But yeah. If I ever saw a gang with with <laughs> with Yankee uniforms on, yes. I'd laugh. I know. You know what I mean? If and I saw a thing with, with just le leather vests mm -hmm. and belt buckles, I'd be like, these fucking assholes. What are you, <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, it, I, 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 I just watched that movie. I rewatched, uh, you ever see this movie Vampires with um, James Woods? Dude. What it's, it's like such a great bet. Great movie. movie. It's a, such a good book. The opening scene yeah. when they're going into the thing and he's, he's such a hard ass. James Wood is just a little... Th he's Dan Adaman's uncle. Yeah, it's funny. But he's put a leather jacket on him and some sunglasses. <laughs> he's a badass. And then it's just them celebrating at the motel. Yeah, yeah. It's like, come on, Padre. You got to blow up some steam. <laughs> you know, so, so like written in an hour, shot in two weeks kind of thing. Yeah. But yeah, I love that. I love that stuff. And I also... Um, to this day, when I go back to Boston, since that town has changed, you know, they say New York changed. I think Boston has changed dramatically yeah, it's changed like, a lot. to the point of, like, you know, I talk to Greg Fitzsimmons all the time, you know, guys who grew up there yeah. and how different it is. And, uh, you know, the Wilbur is, like, where you play now. Yeah. And I can't really, like, do more than two shows there. I wish I could stay there for the whole weekend, but I can only do two. You know, yeah. I can, that's my ticket sales. But, like, playing the connection there, I feel like I really did... Like grow as a comic, I guess you could. Connection say. was my. It was like a four hundred seater that felt like a two hundred seater. It was really cool, and it was in the middle of Faneuil Hall, which was a tourist attraction. So you could always fill it up mm. with your fans, and then people just going to find something to do. And it was just like this kill box. Um, I love the Wilbur. It was great, but I play Laugh Boston because. Oh, I play there too. Yeah, I love it. It's just yeah. easier to sell. You know, yeah. it's like a it's a comedy club. But that used to be Nick's, right? No, no. What's the one that used to be Nick? Nick's is uh, across the street from the Wilbur. Yeah, and it it was uh, that was the one of the best rooms in the country. But that was a hard room. That was a tough room. That room, if you weren't on your game, they'd let you know. Yeah, that was five hundred seater, and they would do upstairs and downstairs. Uh huh. And then you had the Charles Strait Playhouse on the corner, which was like an eighty seater, and then you had Dick Doherty's Comedy Vault 
across through the little mall. Yeah. So you do upstairs, downstairs, over there, go to Dick's, come back upstairs, downstairs. Wow. You could do like five shows in a night. Amazing. At that that time, it was. I so think, imagine bombing there and then having to drive the four hours back to New York. Did you bomb? Oh, I, all the like. I felt like that was a really difficult situation. Right. It was really tough on me. And like another thing that I realized is like, you know, it's okay not to know sports that well in New York. <laughs> there, you better know every everybody's birthday. You better know like yeah, I you know, their averages, all that kind of stuff. I was that guy growing up, and then I grew out of it. And but. now I'm a. F they consider me a, f a pussy. I hang out with my little brother, and his friends, and like we're well, fucking do. You don't know nothing about for the Bruins. I'm like yeah, I yeah. don't. Yeah. I have a kid. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care about sports anymore. But that was like how a guy can like, hey, we need you to do some like say they go to a Boston guy like. We need you to do, like, I don't know, something happened. We need you to do about three hours. So, okay, I'll take everyone through the spring training. You know, I'll take up an hour. You know, like, you could basically kill the time with just sports jargon. What were you going to do before comedy? Were you going to be something? I was going to be an art teacher. I don't know. Um, you know, I think everything I wanted to do has been replaced by AI now. Like, you know, I wanted to... <laughs> you wanted to be a fuck doll? <laughs> yeah, I wanted to be, yeah, a pleasure, a pleasure bottom. A ple I'm sorry, pleasure bottom? <laughs> I, wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to do... Um, I wanted to travel a lot. And then I realized that, like, you know, when people say travel... They're thinking like, you know, you're on the Great Wall of China. Or yeah. like, hey, look at me on the Eiffel Tower. It's not like, hey, Des Moines, Iowa. You know, like I realized domestic travel. That's what I kind of ended up doing. But I could have done, I had many opportunities to do way more uh, international. But I don't know. I feel like um, when I started comedy, which is another like old man talking thing, is like a lot of these guys like tried things and failed at them and they became comics. It was like the drain. Like there was like a lot of like... <laughs> Bad lawyers and yeah. just like finance guys and like a lot of divorce guys who had a meltdown <laughs> and then just guys who like just disappointing their parents. Yeah. Like, that's all it was. Just like my parents wanted me to do something else and I'm doing this and that fuck them. You know, that comedy was punk rock. Yeah. Punk, and then comedy, it became yeah. winners. Like a lot of winners yeah. came into comedy. Yep. And I was like, whoa, you had other options. I don't know why you're doing <laughs> this because this is really a lot of hanging out. Yeah. Like that's another thing I see with the younger guys is just like, you know, a lot of the job is just hanging out, you know. It's like, yeah, like Matt Rife could have been a soap opera star, an action movie star, or a you know a gay roller skating porn guy. He's got a great look. He could have done so many things. And he has the audience that like uh, you know the uh, talk about like the uh, unicorn, like the woman audience. It's uh, really difficult. It is the unicorn. Yeah, my 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 girl. I get some hot girls once in a while, but most girls look like my wife. Yeah. Which I love. I love my crowd. I'll, yeah. I could talk about it for hours. My crowd is great, and all the guys I bring with me, all the people yeah. that come on the road, they're like, man, well, you your crowd really loves material. They love yeah. jokes, and like, they get it, and they don't take it like there's no moans or groans in there. No. And when there are, then I'm like, oh, this is like that early show where like, right. people just like saw, saw a poster in the mall or something like that. But like on the coast, that's where you see all this moaning and groaning going on. Do you yeah. see that too? Um, well, I, I don't really play like... Do you do I'll, your own thing? I don't. I found out like t like maybe 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 eight years ago, ten years ago, I was like, okay, I, I was watching this guy who had regions, like he could sell. Yeah, he did good in certain regions selling. I forget what he was selling, selling whatever. He goes, yeah, I just go here, here. These are my these are my regions. This is what I and they take these. And I was like, oh, I'm just gonna find. I'm good at these regions. I'm good in Florida. I'm good over here. I'm good up in up in New York and. Yeah. New the New England. I'm not good in L.A. I'm not good in California. Maybe San Antonio, blah, blah. I'm just going to play these 15 clubs every year. Right. And then we can add a few because I didn't want to. I got sick of going to places that there's no. I, I don't want to go to Winnipeg and just feel like shit. Oh, because you know what I mean? Turnout. Yeah. It's yeah. like I'm not going to sell here. The only way I'm going to sell here is if I do a some type of Canadian show with Mr. D's. You know oh, what I mean? I or, yeah. or, you know, uh, and I just, it just, I was like, fuck it, I can just do this. I'll make this much money yeah. at the low end, which pays everything, and then some, and I'm happy. Everything else is gravy. I tried to make everything else gravy. Like, you know, so yeah, I, yeah. I got it. You know what I mean? So I could, because I was, I was not enjoying myself anymore. You ever get a point where you just like, the fuck am I doing? Oh, all the time. You I'll do? Be, I'll be that way in uh, five hours when I'm staying in front of the Newark airport. Like, that's like my therapy is standing in front of that airport, just looking into the, looking at planes taking off. Like, at least they're leaving. That's great. You know? it, it's but, a, it's a sad thing when you got to wake up early, get in the car, 
get your bag, check your bag, go through security, yeah. get on the thing, go on the plane, get down, they pick you up, go to the hotel, hopefully you can get checked in, get in your room, now what, wait for the show, do the show, yeah. and then after you're done... It's a click, It's a ticking thing until you leave again. Until you leave again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I will say one thing that I've been very lucky with my um, crowd is that a lot of them stuck with me. There's new people, thanks to all of you guys, I guess, talking about the old days and old comics, and I'm one of them. So some of them come to check me out, and there are a lot of super comedy fans out there. I think that that's yeah. something I didn't see when I first started doing comedy, that it was really um, a knife fight, and I think you can agree with that, that there was a lot of, like, so you think you're funny, and then you'd have to prove it. And yeah. now I think that when I see these TikTok, um, whatever this thing that's going on with uh, crowd work, I'm like, you know, crowd work was something you did to save your life, you know? <laughs> and now, like, there are people yeah. that are better at it, and there's people that can't really do it. But, like, the whole idea of turning it into, like, this, like, you know, kind of, like, free-form parkour, you know, like, kind of thing. <laughs> but I'm like, you know, we used to do that because, like, nothing else was working. And then, like, some of us got better out of it. Some of us got better as comics that didn't have to do anything, and people were listening. But nobody was listening. That's why we were doing it. So it wasn't like, you know, hey, I'm just going to do a ton of crowd work. So. The whole thing the whole thing changed, man. Yeah. So I'll change. And you, you, do you have Instagram? You have TikTok? You have, you have I have any, all that stuff. I don't really. You don't use it? I have a, no, I have a web person that, like, she kind of, like, it's kind of like an assisted living facility. She <laughs> brings me the messages. I tell her what to say, and then she puts them out. But I would say that, like, you can lose a lot of time in the day to that. You can also, um, there's a lot of more ways to waste time instead of, like, getting down to the work, which is listening to a tape and, like, working on the jokes. So, you know, I have worst. my period of where I'm, like, you know, super, like, right now I just did a special. So I need new material. And I wanted to do it short because I feel like people's, attention span is so all over the place. Like, mine's 37 minutes, and now I'm even thinking that's too long. What do you think? You did a special for yeah. 30, 37 minutes? Yeah, it's uh, for Netflix. So. No, I don't I don't think so anymore because yeah. I think, you know, back in the day, a special, you got chosen by HBO or Comedy Central yeah. to do an hour, and oh, my God, and it was this big special event. Now, the, everybody and their mother with the technology can do a special and put it out there, and people will watch it and get millions of views. But so, you, like, and you have to churn shit out so much to stay in the thing, like stay right. in that mix of, oh, that's 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 one of the greats. That's day, like, you know, and guys like Louis were putting out, and Berg started putting specials out every hour. When I was coming up, you put a special out every two or three years. You had two or three years to build up that mm -hmm. new hour, and now it's like. Just get it out, dude. Go do it because you have to stay relevant, and that's how you're gonna sell tape. You can't do. Yeah, I remember don't know. radio. You used to do radio. Yeah, yeah. You used to be in the paper. Yeah. You used to have all clubs. Do not promote anything anymore. Yeah, that's true. They don't promote shit. You are your own promoter. That's why I feel like it's more of a job now. So when the younger comics, I'm like, I feel for you in a way. But a lot of them have grown up in that world of self promotion, so it's nothing new to them. It's There's like, some guys that are so good at it. Yeah, and it really is like, you know. It, it impresses me how much work they put into it, you know, because to me, like, the comedy itself is an exhausting experience. That, so, part, that part of it, like, doing the comedy, getting to the gig, getting the gig. All that, yeah, the getting logistics. Getting the, the material, and then now you have to, I have to go, f I have to go f fucking comment on comments. Right, and then there's, there's the other thing of just, like, when you said about the hour special and, like, you know, there was there was generations of guys who didn't put anything out because they were touring. They were in Vegas. You want to see this guy? Yeah. There's no tape. You got to go to Vegas and see this guy, like Leno and yeah. all these different people who were like power acts, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, part of me is like, you know, that's kind of cool. But in today's world where these guys are pumping out maybe every 16, 18 months, something right. else is coming out. I'm like, it's amazing that they can churn like that because, you I know. I think it, I think it. Hold I, on a second. I'm getting. It's an old phone. As we're talking about technology, you pull out a flip phone. <laughs> oh, good news. The writer's strike is over. Oh, <laughs> yay. Sorry, right, slow Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> then I can stop doing this. <laughs> dude, um, <laughs> you, got but, a, you, know, you have I, a flip phone, dude. Can I see that? Sure, if you want. Who is that? Sorry, I'm on a podcast. Who is this? Yes? You have the wrong number. <laughs> Okay. Wow, a wrong number even. That's crazy, dude. Where do you get these? 
Well, you first have to go back in time. No, uh, <laughs> oh, you know, at a PC Richards or a uh, Wiz. <laughs> the Wiz. Nobody even knows what Wiz is. Remember Wiz? Yeah, no, these are great, though. That's great. It's not on the web at all, so it's off the grid. You have nothing. You can't do anything with nothing. it. Nothing. Except text, phone calls. Text. Text and phone calls. Phone calls. Yeah. Yeah, maybe if the wind's right, you can send a picture. That's about it. Mm -hmm. You had, you were, um, you had such a crazy big show on Comedy Central at a time when I think Com Tough Crowd, you, Chappelle, that was an epic time to have a show. This is a good topic to talk about. What's which that? Which is Comedy Central and how that, I'm sure when you were in Boston, you are a young comic. Yeah. You know, I remember when you came here, you were like ready to fight. You, you know, I said this about Greg, so I'm saying it about you. It's like, yeah. you were real Boston. Yeah. You look like you could fight and dance. Yeah. You know, because they were both important <laughs> in Boston, you know. Like either you're an egghead or you're going to fight and you can dance. Yeah. So I was like, um, you know, Comedy Central was so important to comedy. Mm. It was like really where all of us kind of cut our teeth. It was like one of those things where like the people who run in Comedy Central were only like maybe 10 years older than the rest of us. So, you know, it's kind of an MTV kind of vibe. Like they It were was. Comedy, they were TV people, but they were comedy people as well. So they would go to the clubs and they would talk to us and then the agents and all that kind of manager stuff. That came a little bit later because mm -hmm. they would just kind of see us at these the com at the uh, Montreal Comedy Festival, all these yep. different places. And then they were like, well, okay, we're going to do a show with you. You know, like we see that you're, uh, you know, like you're a road guy, we do a show, what's your idea? And I gave them the, the Insomniac the idea. And that really touched the chord with a lot of people. You know, it didn't really lead to like incredible money or anything. Like, you think didn't a lot get of money think, for that? Uh, no, I made okay money, but it didn't lead to like, and by the way, like I could have kept doing it, but I only have one liver. But uh, the other thing about it is just like, you know, it's really about access and it's really about, you know, you talk about travel, like how difficult it was to travel with a crew and you're there for, you know, multiple days and all that kind of stuff. But like, poor me. But now there's a trillion travel shows out there. A lot of them do it better, quicker, cheaper. A lot of them also have interesting takes like God Rest His Soul, Anthony Bourdain. There was never a guy like that. I mean, I thought his thing with food and how culture is you know like it was really a great concept and it proved itself over and over again so that guy was a genius you know but for me and my drinking party show whatever it was it helped it helped sell tickets but it also was a double-edged sword you know which is like you do want to tell jokes and people are screaming out take a shot you know that was a few years of my life but yeah. i would say that you know comedy central you know for me john stewart of course all the people that are, are now like you know you know real successful mm. kind of started there, and now what is Comedy Central like? I don't know what what is it. Is it an offshore company now? Like <laughs> where is it? Like what's going on here? Is it's, it an LLC? Like <laughs> what, what what goes on? Is it a school? Like what what do, what do yeah, they do there? It's part daycare and part Daily Show. Yeah, well, yeah, I think they, it's Daily Show in South Park that run that that's it. keep that keep the lights on. At they, least. they they don't have a building out of the building's gone. <laughs> Amazing. They don't have a building. Yeah, I mean they they went. Totally, um, I mean, it's all digital now. They don't need They to, didn't see that. You no. Know, they didn't see the future, and I guess... Well, digital, Netflix, Netflix murdered them. Yeah, for sure. Netflix was like, all right, you're just going to take these people, we're going to take everybody else. Mm -hmm. If you remember Netflix's first, um, uh, first hour specials, they took everybody. Mm -hmm. they, and there was guys where you're like, you know, it was a guy with a dog and, you know, who juggled. Really? They didn't give, yeah, they had Tom Segura, Bill Burr, and then fucking magic dudes. And they, they had a bunch of different, they were just like, let me just, let's just take all these people. And all of a sudden people were like, there's another option. Once you add another option. Yeah. It's like, fuck you. Goodbye. And they went over there. Netflix, and then Netflix also benefited from the, um, you know, they got all that content from all these networks because they also didn't believe in digital. They're like. CBS, ABC, whatever. Yeah, yeah, sure. We'll we'll like lease out our stuff. Well, it's easy they, money for us. And they realized that they also were shooting themselves in the foot because. What they didn't realize is that like um, technology is always going to get better and smaller, and it's going to be, you know, the average idiot's going to be able to use it someday. And they didn't understand like cameras, like the average. I got three autistic kids running a five camera shoot. I love it. Up in an, hold on one second. Can I answer it? The problem with this phone is it doesn't turn do off. Do speakerphone. Do speakerphone. <laughs> Can you do speakerphone? I'm on a podcast right now. Hello? Phone, don't answer. Oh, whoa. Who is that? Who is that? I don't know. 
You know who that is. I think it was Nikki Haley. <laughs> <laughs> too late. I was getting messages from her all week. She uh, she said, well, she was so mean. <laughs> <laughs> so don't answer. That's got to be. It's off now, everyone. Okay, relax. <laughs> now it'll just vibrate in my pants. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you're a young guy, right? You come. You I'm not young like, anymore, you know, dude. I'm saying, like, the whole idea is, like, you know, you're a young guy, you got an idea for a show, you're a comic, you know, you're trying to build that following, you got all these different things you want to do, and then it's like, okay, do you go out for pilot season? Remember pilot season? I, I was always too ugly for it, but I would go out there, <laughs> they would go, hey, you know, you might want to go out there, and I'm like, I don't think I'm an actor, to be <laughs> honest, I'm not an actor, and I really don't think I'm that castable, They're like, but you never know, yeah. so come on out here, you know, you got miles, come on out. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that wasn't my deal. But People don't understand what pilot season was, is that, uh, I don't know, I forget when it was, let's just say uh, January to March, there was a time when they... They bought all the shows before that. Now they need to f fill all those shows with actors. Yeah. And as a young comic, you would go to L.A. for two months, and they, your agent would send you out on as many auditions as she could, and hopefully you booked a pilot. Yeah. And if you got that pilot, success and blah, 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 followed after that. 99% of us didn't get a pilot. But the... Um See, I never really did that two month embedded in LA kind of I thing. I did. Was, I was on the road, but I know guys who went out there and it's like they went out there with a drinking problem. They came back with a Coke pot problem because it was just so much sitting around. There's not as much stand up in LA. So. Patrice said Bob Kelly went to LA for pilot season, a sexy Italian. He came back a fat Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> I came back like 60 pounds heavier. I did a. Uh, dead inside. I remember doing a, a a pilot and how like you know for people who don't know the process they got the whole cast together at the end of the pilot and everybody's so pumped they take a picture of the whole cast like those pictures you see like you know yeah uh, living single or mm -hmm. like whatever it's like the whole cast back to back and everything and every and they do that and I go why do they do it now I mean like you know they could do it down the road and they're like no uh, it's better to do it now yeah because like people are going to be replaced yeah the show itself is just going to be shelved so Gone. it's kind of like one of those like you know you're thinking like this is so funny. Like, I don't even feel like, you know, it's like, I want to just scream right now. It's so exciting. And they're like, no, let's get this. That'd be a great show. If you could somehow get the pilots that never it. got picked up. I'd love it. If me and you could just be like, all right, today's pilot was with, you know, Jim Brewer and Dave Chappelle called Buddies. Yeah. That I never got picked up. And we just watch it and comment on it. It would be so much fun to like. To see like all of these uh, crushed dreams, I think that's what we call it. <laughs> yeah, and we should have a juicer there. And we're drinking <laughs> orange crushes. <laughs> <laughs> it was so. I mean, I've had I've had pilots. You have have you must have pilots. I was I like I said, I was never an actor. You I had, wanted to be you a had comic. A, you had a thing called uh, you had a game show though. Oh, uh, I did a reboot of the Gong Show, and I knew immediately when no, we were you had your own show. Oh, that was the show you were on. Dude, let that, me tell you something. I, but I self produced that. That was before everybody was self. You came down this the Pussycat. Yeah, the bar one night, and you're like, "Yo, dude, I'm doing a. I got this thing I'm doing. It's a kind of a pilot I'm putting on by myself. Uh, it's a game." Uh, and I was like, "What?" And it was very elaborate, very thought out. A lot of money I put into it. You put a lot of money into it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> into everything but the actual gameplay. That was the thing. It's like I had cards made. I had a puppet. I had a puppet that squirted. There was like. Endless amounts of <laughs> fluids all over the players. They were really good sports. You had a you had and what a we wanted die? to do was what a, was the die? Uh, a, a, the, it was a die, but it was a whole like skeleton. Like this was before, um, you know, uh, the whole like skeleton thing. So it was like a sassy talking skeleton, and yeah. he would, um, you know, basically. Can I, is this a our show? Yeah. Okay. He would come on the players. You know, he was just coming on everybody. He would roast them. Yeah. As the show went, and then if you got if you get lost, yeah. You would get shot in the face. Yeah, with a big load. With a big of load. Cream. <laughs> and it was actual cream. And like we bought a creamer and like um my but, guy Ben, who but, we're working on another you, game, by the way. This you, guy Ben. You didn't so tell great. people and you would ruin people's yeah, outfits. No, it, was, it was like and my whole storage area stunk of this cream. And I was like, oh my God. And then it took me, Bobby, to this year to throw out that puppet. You threw it out? I had to get rid of him. Wow. He was like, I was like, I'm never going to use no, him. Oh, you should have sold him. And he's almost them. child size. And I was like, tell my doorman, I go, I'm bringing up a skeleton. All right. <laughs> it's an actual prop. This is not a 
a, a missing cold case or anything like that. Can you help me? No, what if it and was? And we're both lifting what it like it a dead body, like, goodbye, buddy. What if it's you a- killed John Benet Ramsey and then you made a game <laughs> show out of it and that's how well, you get rid of the body? That's that's more of an offshore kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think that's a three mile limit game. Yeah, that game, dude, I remember. And then we all you, had a great time, though. Okay, great time, but you had Gilbert Goffrey was the voice, which is yeah. brilliant. But he totally. He bailed. He, he totally was not. I, I don't think he got it. And, like, that was the other thing about Gilbert. Like, Gilbert was good that way where you could, like, he talk about acting. Like, I think he really wanted to be a bigger movie guy than he was because he was always so good in movies. If right. he if they got him and let him do what he does. Right. But he, he basically would say, like, he would say, can you do this? Can you do this? Can you do this? And he'd be like, okay. But, like, he doesn't get the concept. Like, he, he wasn't like that. And I was like, you know what? I got the right guy and we don't have enough time to like get him comfortable with it so yeah. i felt bad that i didn't use him correctly but you had me do it yeah no you were great you were like, so was ari doing it you had ari and me do it and big j i believe and anybody who lost or won got to be the puppet for a while and it was like kind of like yeah. you know i already got these guys here let's see what i can come up with you know i, mean, so. I thought it was a great idea and i thought it was funny the only part that sucked was getting that come on you yeah it really was like <laughs> You know, it was before it was the like my pandemic, childhood <laughs> when fluids were cool. Yeah, you, you know? can do that now. <laughs> well, you have a, what's the new game show? Can you talk about it? Not yet. I, I mean, we're still working on it. But like, I have to say, like when you, when people go, like, do you ever want to do it? It's like, no. I I just wanted to get some. I love that people can put content up just like when they want to. But it's like I never really figured out what I wanted to do. So I just wanted to do something simple and or whatever. Well, but this is again cost me a ton of money. It's been but back years. then you had to put the money up and then you had to try to sell it. Yeah. If you didn't sell it, you got fucked. Right now. now you yeah. can throw it right up, and people. You can throw it right on YouTube or yeah. Punch Up Dot Live, and you could say, "All right, it's a dollar an episode," and people, your fans, would just come and watch it. Yeah, and you can you can make you're the network now, which they didn't have when mm. you were doing that. I will be putting up more clips from my special, but also like. I have rights now to a lot of other content like that uh, of other shows. Like that what? Like uh, the Dave's old porn show that was on Showtime. Yeah, what that was. I your, that, that was your show after. No, no, I had done that. Um, was that before? That was after. Um, Insomnia, yeah, yeah, Insomnia, yeah. yeah. And that was another one. Like I've done a bunch of shows where I actually. What? Explain that show again. That was like we're retro tri- tribute to classic erotic porn, and like you've seen other versions of this kind of thing. You know, like uh, what's it like a. Uh, Behind the Green Door, all those classic films. So we would try and get the original actors in and then the comics to kind of like wingman them and like talk about the scenes and how different they were. And it was hilarious because there really are like so many over the top dramatic porn movies. Yeah, and like not like today's OnlyFans, which is kind of like, you know how like everything defaults down to like the easiest, quickest, cheapest way. OnlyFans is there's nothing easier than that. You don't even leave your house. Yep. You know, it's like, you know, if you're if you're like classy, you put new sheets on your bed. Like that's <laughs> that's only fits. But this was like they'd have these elaborate situations, car chases, yeah, fights. they rent a castle. Yeah, it was like, you know, <laughs> all these different themes and a lot of frustrated yeah. directors and stuff like that. Uh, so it was great to get them in. And it's funny how a lot of the original people that we had in there who were out of the business kind of got a bump back in. Like they're like, you know, like uh, oh, you know, like from the oh, show. Yeah. You know, well, I don't think from the show. I just think from like People discovering their old work and they kind of getting offers like, "Hey, do you want to come back in and you know shoot a couple scenes?" So you know, you know, I'm it, hoping want... they make money now because they didn't really make that much money back in the day. You know? No, now that but they, I mean, you can make so much money on OnlyFans or yeah. What do you think of that whole platform? Like, I don't know anything about it. Really. If I had a pussy, I'd be great. Well, you know, if I if I was a girl, it'd be cool because. I mean, so there's no guys who make any money on it. It's really just. It's... I don't know. Is there guys that make money on OnlyFans? I guess there's a few. F- foot things, or you gotta have abs. I don't know. Oh, okay. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, if I went on, you'd have to be into this, and I don't, know, you- I don't, how, I don't know how, how much of a fetish, <laughs> you know, this is. You know what I mean? There's someone out there. I mean, if there's a chick who likes, you know, weird belly buttons and dead toenails, <laughs> you know, if that's a thing in some country, I might make a lot of money, but I don't think so. I think OnlyFans, like, they're trying to, they're trying to clean, they want to get comedy in there. They want to get podcasts. Yeah. They want to get uh, stand ups to do regular shit because they don't want to just be be- just porn, but you can't, you can't undo it. Oh, for sure. You can't, two, it's, it's, it's two be- of the top 10 OnlyFans people are men. Oh. Who is it? Just, uh, just saw we have to get him in here. One's down. One has Down syndrome. <laughs> That's one hundred percent. And they do erotic stuff, or they do other things like trick. I gotta figure that out. Really? 
There's no Trick way shots they, or something. Yeah, they can come on cue. That would be. Uh, yeah, so you know, it's there's like that. It's, it's like those guys who 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 hit the basketball from like a mile away, and they mm-hmm. whoa. You do that with cum. Yeah. Ha. Uh, and you just. <laughs> well, that would be that puppet. Uh-huh. <laughs> they would clean up. So you Are shot. We, who shot your special? Um, Scott Gaulick. He uh, also is uh, the director of the AVN Awards, where that's where I originally met him. Wow. He did my road work thing. He's really good guy loves comedy and really goes above and beyond like with me like we were editing for so long we had some technical problems but at the end of the day it was really just me deciding on stuff and to be honest like when i said 37 minutes i wish it was 30 minutes now because now like everybody's doing like around 40 minutes special so i get that the audience doesn't have that much time to watch something because i know when i watch something i pause it i get something to eat i make a phone call Mm -hmm. i do a lot of different things then i jump back in and like in a way, comedy shouldn't be experienced that way. Like it should be like, boom! Like this is it. You know, like you're well, now at the you, show. Well, you're giving them is a little little taste, and then you want them to come see you live. I want them to come see me live, and, and I and I I feel like I feel like you're the same thing. When you see you live, I seen you on TV. You're great. You're awesome. But there's something else that you do live True. that is just not a lot of people have. Well, I think we can say that for everybody because. We that was a nice compliment, but I'm saying like well, the thanks pandemic. For, thanks for ruining it by adding everybody. Well, I was just going to say that the <laughs> pandemic taught <laughs> us that zooming yeah. wasn't going to replace comedy. Because remember, for a while there yeah. was like these Zoom shows are pretty awesome. Buddy. I didn't ever did one, and like I was like, yeah, like who finds this? Fu-? Like you have to be the loneliest person in the world. <laughs> but there's some comics that can do a Zoom show. There's some guys who sure just, who. I don't like guys like you and me. You have to get up there, and you feel like that person didn't like that joke. You didn't like that. Okay, like you do that. You yeah. Can, that that's part of the like a tell experience is that it, there might be a joke that they didn't get, and you will acknowledge that. Sure. You will be in that room, and you'll make that funny, and then you'll go off, and then you'll do a uh, you'll you'll be like, I'm sorry, that was dirty, and then you'll do something even more terrible. And they'll la- and then you get them into it somehow. I, I think. think every show should be different, or like every night is different, especially in a club world, as you know. Like yep. I remember, I was just in uh, Acme, uh, uh, great uh, club, American Comedy Club in um, in San Diego. Is it- oh, American Club. No, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. These that are one. all like great clubs from the road. Yep. Yep. And I was like, look how cool this is. And like you know, the the guy's putting the checks down, you know, because it's like last call and all, because he's doing his job. Nah, you know? fuck and I'm like, that. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, you know how difficult. Think about like a Broadway show where they did that and like how cool that would be to see them have to deal with that. Yep. Like how much fun that would be, like Le Miserable or something or the Wick- Wicked. And they're putting checks down on everybody, like, do you want another yeah. drink? That weird conversation they have. Yep. We don't take the, you know, like that kind of thing as they're up there singing their little heads off, you know? It's, so I'm it's, like, it's there's the, something about comedy that is still balls. And I that's know, but it's, it. it's so unnecessary at it this point. It is unnecessary, yeah. It's so unnecessary for a club. I get back in the day when they didn't understand sure you know, money but i just now, feel like it's part mo- of it and nobody's using cash they're just swiping a car it's done mm. nobody gives a fuck but that that's a great club with a, like a pumped audience yeah and like there's a couple of them out there like you know i can i i, I we wouldn't have enough time to name all the great clubs that i feel like helped me get to the next level of just being a better comic right because it's still the clubs that build the comic and i think yeah you know, here we are above the yeah. cellar and yeah. I, I, I like that you put that in the intro because it really is now this is an iconic place it's, you know, iconic it's like cellar, yeah. everybody from overseas like how many times have you done a show here i do all the late shows yeah. these people with their travel bags at the show they're coming either right from the airport or they're going to the airport from the club i mean every that's show weird. i do at the pussycat on Tuesdays, there's, I mean, all over the world. Yeah. Slovenia, some shit last week. Amazing. Uh, uh, Muslims sitting next to a, uh, you know, Israeli. I mean, uh, German. I mean, it's all the wars yes. are right there. You know what I mean? It's a little UN. Yeah, it's a little UN of the clubs, which I love. I used to not like that, but I think I just said that because someone said that. Dude, what the fuck, man? Mm-hmm. It's all tourists. I, I kind of like that now because if your shit works in front of everybody, yeah, it's a, you're working. I it's feel. another humbling. I mean, I wouldn't say that like, you know, I'm knocking it out of the park here, but I am trying to do new stuff and also like um you know i'm old so i want to see who i can follow i still go on last and i want to see if i can able to follow these it's people. crazy so, but the uh the the thing about it is like it's not my crowd so a lot of things that are given are not in front of a uh showcase crowd you know yep. there's a lot of things that you're like i can't believe you moaned at that one you're right. gonna hate this next one then because <laughs> that one is you know 
That one's I consider that one clean, you know. But you but you're the guy that most comics like, dude. He's my favorite. Who's your who's your top favorite comedians? And you're always at no the top way. of I, I swear made to it. God, you did. Thanks, buddy. But you know that. You know that. Yeah, no, when people I, meet you like, dude, you're my favorite comedian. I'm part of the, I feel like I'm a team player. I think we all are at this point, you know, like there's no really like I I'm I'm not jealous of anybody. if anything, I feel like you know, I've always been in competition with myself, and I think you you get it too. That like, you know, there's a lot more to life than this. Unfortunately, I don't think I have much of a life. But honestly, like, th there's the actual like cloud of funny out there, and like you're trying to capture it. That like, I don't, you know, you're doing your own thing, you're doing your thing. So I'm just a part of the scene, you know. Right. And like, I don't know, was that too esoteric or no? Weird? That was great. I, I think I, this chair kind of matched that kind of weird. <laughs> Kind of no, but I'm saying, talk. like, these three fucking autistic kids right here, they love you. They've never come. Thanks, fellas. They've never said, they've never said, oh, you're, you're one of my favorite comics to me. No, but as soon as you were on, they're like, David tells on. David tells no, on. No, I, I think that last time we actually sat together at, on, a, on a show was in at the Skangfest. Skank which was Fest, another yeah. thing that I felt that, like, as the old man, I was like, this is great. You guys put on your own festival. Yeah. Look at this crowd. Like, a super... Pumped comedy crowd, very polite. Yeah, you know, out in the heat, standing out there waiting on com on shows and They're stuff the, like that. It's the best. I was like, man, this is really. And Christine, who put it together with Lewis, yeah, I was like, wow, you know, and and Rebecca, talk, Rebecca Trent, and Rebecca, yeah, yeah, I'm like, a lot of you guys talk about doing this, and you guys did it. So they I did mean, it. A, they did it, and look at look how weird this is. They did that, mm -hmm. and Montreal's gone. Is it gone, or is it's, it going to be it's re gone. reimagined? It's gone. It's gone. You really think so? It's bankrupt. Yeah, but that there's a lot of things that are bankrupt. I mean, they might not. <laughs> th how this? It's gone this year. Oh, okay. It's not coming. Wow. What about the new faces? The, uh, the, <laughs> so that title's up for grabs now. Yeah. <laughs> that was well, not us. I, but my first, my you know, my first Montreal was with you. Did were you on the Dirty Show? It was me, you, Louis, Nick. Uh, Jim, Nick, Jim Jeffries. Yes, oh, I remember that one. Yeah, that was like one of the best shows I've ever been on. Mm. And uh, Montreal's where I met Doug Stanhope, who's really? my favorite comic. And, He's your favorite comic? Yeah. yeah, and like you know, for years and years. And that is also where Mitch Hedberg, of course, you know, like really popped and really went to the next level. Where was Mitch funny? Mitch was great. You know, I mean, to be honest. When people always go, hey, Dave, you know, like a lot of people kind of take over your manner. It's like I see more of Mitch Hedberg in a lot of these new comics than I see of pretty much anybody else. Like they really have kind of like seen what he done or if they didn't, they kind of organically defaulted into what he did. But he really had an influence outside of just the realm of the people who knew him. I think that like it trickled down generationally. A lot of guys did you, though. A lot of guys. Yeah, yeah, up, yeah. But that's you know, a, I mean, look, yeah. I, I think when we came up, a lot of guys did Anthony Clark. Really? Yeah, a lot of guy. Yeah, because it's, it's a. I, people don't understand that when you're coming up, you're absorbing, and on the way to becoming whoever the fuck you are, you're going to observe people you love, right? Well, that, that's like and Colin. Then, and then you work was, through it. Colin was such an inspiration on so many of us. I mean, he was the smartest guy. He was quick. Yeah. I mean, he was also like the real deal guy. You know, he really had done stuff. Yeah. He was from Brooklyn. You know, all that kind of stuff. And I was like, yeah, man, like you know. The, the, this is what it's about, like seeing those guys in front of a crowd. Havy, those are the guys who were working here, you know. So Havy was the king. I heard Havy was uh, to this day. Like I, I owe him so many props. We used to come and watch him. Even when I was at NYU, we would come over and he would be. You on went to stage. NYU? Yeah, for what? Like right down the street, for uh, what? film and television. Oh no! Before no, no. it became, you know, protest. Before you, it was a, <laughs> so protest you, capital. So you, uh, you for the Jews back then. Yeah, or uh -huh. whatever was the at the time there. I think it was. Um, well, pretty much, it's always been that. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you know what I'm saying. Like, um, he really is uh, another guy who like still does it, which is kind of cool. And you know, all those legends of the uh, Montreal Comedy Festival too, like. Um, uh, you know Bobby Slayton and I mean, um, people. This you can Dom ask Myrera. Those guys were like it was great Dom, to hang with them. Fucking great. Yeah, you know, I, I would. I, I would. Dom always made me laugh. He's so funny. So funny. But the thing about Dom too, he didn't give a fuck. Yeah, he would just he would go up and kill. Mm -hmm. I did the uh, comics come home. I went up and murdered. He went up after me. He went, yeah, give it up for Bobby Kelly. Very funny. You'll forget about him in a couple minutes. And he just That's went great. up and murdered, Balls. Balls. just murdered. And uh, but it, I feel bad. The comic, like Montreal, was one of the funnest. 
It was for great. me. I know there was a lot of bullshit with it and a lot of whatever. Everybody had, you know, they don't pick who get. I thought they picked young people. They let the the veteran comics, the you know, they they had such a swath of everybody who were doing it, mm-hmm. and then we all hung out. You got to hang out with comics you never would actually hang out with or friends. You know what I mean? You know, yeah. like that week, the nasty show. How fun was that? I mean that. I I had done it in its like I would say that when Bobby was the host, yeah. that was its heyday, and the crowds were smart, but they liked it dirty. And then I remember doing it years and years later, and it was like they're kind of just angry, drunk, and they yeah. are filthy. Uh, and yeah, it was yeah. like one of those where like you know you started the show. I went I went I, last time I did it, it wasn't even dirty. <clears throat> oh really? Yeah, it was like. That's actually clean. Like, what the fuck is that? Like, there were people complaining that it wasn't dirty enough. Really? It was just a show. Yeah. Yeah. I should have had that skeleton puppet. Really? That <laughs> would be... <you laughs> just come all over the audience? <laughs> yeah. Why'd you throw it out, dude? I know. Oh, you could, I would have bought that for $3,000. Oh, my God. Isn't I, it- my wife would have bought it. It's somewhere in a landfill right Someone now. Someone could come on her. With his arm of, like, deliverance. <laughs> Get me out of here. Uh, what was you I was going to say? I was going to say, like, um, that's sad because, um, you know... Now. You know, they, they were pushing a lie there for a long time. Like, you come here and you get a manager and agent. And I remember going there and I was like, you know, I see all the guys that would book me on the road already. And, yeah. you know, I had to talk. You know, I, I know these people. So I would talk to them and, like, all that kind of stuff. And I'd be like, so what are you guys doing here? They're like, we're looking for new acts. You know, like, we're just looking for, you know. It was an excuse for people to go. Yeah, get out. But get it out, was an excuse out. for us to get together, which at the end I still thought was great. It was like camp for us. Mm-hmm. We could all kind of hang out. It's a beautiful town. It's a great town, great yeah. festival. They also kind of liked the fact that we were comics there. It was kind of like you were. Loved like, it. They little, loved it. A little rock star, more like Formula One kind of guy. I thought I'm, I'm gonna miss the. F- I'm so sad it's gone. Mm. I love Skankfest, and yeah. I'm glad it's. I'm so glad that something like that is there. But Montreal Comedy Festival was my thing, and I, I'm, I'm gonna miss all those people. We We're not gonna see those people. French. That we used was to the, trash that was, the French. That was, that was, that was great. You gotta give it to them. What's up with you? You have this recorder now that you use. Where did that come from, dude? Uh, I started playing before the pandemic, but then when I had all that <laughs> pandemic time, I could not stop. What, what is this? Oh, I didn't know it. Oh. What is well, that? Where did that come from? <laughs> I don't know, dude. That's what from, is uh, that? That's from Amy's show, A Life with Beth. Well, did you did you play played, a rabbi? I played type. <laughs> I played myself. <laughs> <laughs> I played myself there. You, that's you, actually in you the temple a, that play. both of us we're both from the same town. That was the temple that we both kind of grew up in. So really, and um, I just did a fundraiser for them, by the way. But yeah, no, I've been doing that for a while now. Unfortunately. <laughs> um, I'm not. I'm able to play all the notes, but I can't remember the 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 songs. So like my my own onset dementia is hitting me as I'm like they say playing an instrument helps your memory. So I'm like doing it every day. Like I just started again, like doing it every day, trying to remember these tunes. It's like you know, it's like sad. It's very sad. So yeah. how did you? Why did, how did you add it to your act? I figured, why not? It's just the next level, you know? <laughs> I feel like that's the one thing that kind of fell apart in, like, comedy and, like, maybe, you know, the whole idea of being, like, entertaining. People are like, I got to make a point and I got to do stuff. <laughs> and I was like, you know, I'm not that guy and I just want, like, the laughs, you know? Right. You know, be selfish. I want yeah. laughs. And, like, I felt like for a while comedy was, like, way too serious right and like it was kind of like you know i don't get it you know like why you guys you know nobody came here for a speech right yeah they got to the point where it's like we're gonna do a comedy show without an audience yeah well now we'll do it without a mic but it, it's also <laughs> like you know like you see these slow cat blinks coming out of the crowd like oh my god i can't believe <laughs> you know this is my one night out you know? yeah right whatever but thanks for uh knowing my stuff buddy this is a real uh Taking me through the whole, um, you know, the whole thing. So, how did you guys, um, you know, how did you pick this team for your show? I didn't. Uh, I didn't pick them. Yeah, they picked me. I like that. <laughs> yeah, they picked me. I, uh, yeah, Joe Russell, who has a sh- cheese show. Do you yeah. like cheese? Not really. Are you gonna smoke right <laughs> now? I won't unless you don't want me to. No, no, what? you can't smoke in here. Okay. I'll, no. Can I hold it though? You Is can hold right? it. Yes, you can. Ava, Ava's upstairs. Um, oh, really? Um, the, um, where can you smoke indoors? All right, relax. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, okay. All right, you got a special coming out. Yes, I do. And it's on Netflix. Yeah, oh, March 26th, uh, Netflix called Hot Cross Buns. What does that mean? Um, you'll have to tune in to check it out. <laughs> uh, you, you're learning it. And it's really <laughs> funny because, uh, you know, 
The one thing that is difficult is finding a name for a special because so many have done. Like Netflix puts out a hundred a year, so yeah. like whatever you think is out there, it's already been taken. So you got to really dig deep, right? You know. <laughs> and did they did they buy it after? And you? No, you... I guess what is it? Their their new deal, whatever it is. What's that? Where they get to show for a couple of years? And oh, they own it for like a couple it, years. They'll, whatever. They'll rebuy it. But this is for the fans. It's also for. Um, I guess it's for me, you know, in a way, because like. I hadn't done something in a while. I wanted to put something out. I didn't want it to be long. So forgive me if you're, you know, if you're bored because I really kind of went out of my way to make sure that like people will watch it, you know, and um, you know, it's not too serious. Everything in it is a joke, so don't get all crazy. You know, you, <laughs> people get crazy with they do. jokes now. <laughs> they get crazy, but I think it's not I think they're coming back around with shit. Yeah, no, we're lucky. We're pretty lucky. Like, yeah. Comedy's never been better. And the boom continues, as they say. Well it's, it's great because I mean Netflix to be on Netflix, that's that's awesome. A half hour and if it pops on there, it's 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 yeah. you worldwide now. Back when Netflix first started, it was just America and Canada a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now you get famous on Netflix, you you can go anywhere in the world. Right. Which is nuts. I can't leave the country though. Why? My mom has dementia, so I can't really be that far away flight wise. Oh shit. That's what's taking me out of this whole space. I thought it was experience. some type of drug thing. No, 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 no. I thought you were gonna come up. <laughs> Because no, I got arrested she, for cocaine back gotta, in eighty seven. Nothing like that. I gotta go like I got to be a flight away. You know what I'm saying? That's right. why even these connecting flights, I'm afraid of them. Does, so, does someone take care of your mom? Yeah, no, I have round the clock care. It's super expensive, dude. It is. Yeah, no one talks about that at the student loan uh, uh, reimbursement, whatever that is, forgiveness. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, round the clock, six figures, easy a year. Wow. And uh, keeps me on the road, but it also is the best way to go. And, uh, you know, to be honest, for there's a lot of people probably in our same generation who are now dealing with this of older parents and having to take yeah. care of them. And I'm lucky because my sister is the primary care, all the doctor appointments, so much work. And it really is like whatever you thought you were going to do at your years, that becomes your job as well. So my sister is a teacher. She's already helping people and now she's doing this. So she's a real angel. Yeah. I pay the bills. I go out, I do what I can. It's my house. I yeah. do all that kind of stuff there. So, if anything, I would say to anybody who's going through that, I feel for you. And, like, honestly, it is a hard road. And when people come to the show and they go, you know, I understand, like, my dad is going through that and all yeah. that kind of stuff. So the 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 other, to make it funny, would be just saying that, like, enjoy the years you have. You know, like I'm saying, like, yeah. you know, right now you're wearing a cowboy hat because you want to. Oh, I all forgot right? I was wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot I was Well, I used to, I had a thing in my act where I was like, you know, when somebody, because my, my grandmother died, and I was like, it's terrible when you get that call that, you know, oh, she's dead, and you're like, oh, shit, but it's kind of great because you can, they're, they're not hurting anymore. True, yeah. The phone call you don't want is they're sick. Oh, Because yeah. then you're like, fuck, they're going to need rides. <laughs> shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? True. It's like, it's like oh, I got to take it. A lot to, of work. I got to take her to dialysis how many days? Yes. Can't we just get in an Uber? No. You know, you know, and then they want it. They might need my sister needed a kidney. It's like fuck. I gotta. I'm doing good. Yeah. Like I work so hard. It's a I don't lot wanna, of work. I don't want to give a kidney. Oh, you know, is that true? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I don't want to. That's real deal. That's lifetime movies. Uh, but she got a kidney. Neil, next door neighbor, gave her a kidney. God bless. Yeah. What's up, Neil? Yeah. Good for you. Thank now, you. How do you how do you like uh, hit it back? Like an edible or like what do you what do you send them I, on the I, holiday? I think she gave him a hand job. <laughs> I think something like no that. kidding. <laughs> this kidney is really. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Take pic one of these. Picture of her like, drinking a, like power drinking a. <laughs> but I would uh, say that um, you know. When you get older, no one ever talked about this. No, I it's know. It's kind of like the life we live, and you know, you got you got a kid, so that's also so much thing. So when you do go on the road, like the fans should appreciate it because it really is difficult. I want to go on the road, but you should also. I appreciate the fact that you can go on the road and make that money. Mm -hmm. and, you know, because you know some people go away. Oh yeah, like it is still a drain. People go away. Mm -hmm. There's comics I know, and I'm like, where the where are they? They don't go out. They're gone. It's done. Yeah. It's over. Oh, well, you get you become too famous where you can't go play the clubs because it's kind of you 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 know I I was you playing arenas now you got to go back to uh, LOL in San Antonio it fucks you up that is true so you don't do it I'm I love that we can you know. 
Like we don't give a fuck. We're comics. I'll go. I'll play this. I'll do that. Yeah. I'll go. I don't care. I'll do a one nighter. Let me just get up and work on my act. I'm with you better. on that. And you're. I mean, you're a comics comic. I know you fucking heard that. But you are one of the legends in New York, dude. And you got to check out his special. It's on Netflix. It's uh, March 26th. Yes. Check it. It's Hot Cross Buns. It's only 37 minutes, which I uh, I can watch you for hours. 37 minutes, three laughs. <laughs> but they're big they're laughs. Huge. It's a nonstop now this, laugh. I Honestly, Bobby, it's like a punchline festival in there. Oh, or as it? you would call it, a joke rodeo. A joke. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you check them out. We got a couple questions for you, for the Patreon fans, if you can stick around right, for yeah. a couple minutes. Yeah. Uh, all right, if you want to stick around and check out the questions that you guys ask them, uh -oh. and even if you're not in Patreon, you can ask the questions questions uh just go to the uh youtube page in the comments ask the questions and we'll send that what's the email they can use uh you you ask the questions through patreon so you have to subscribe to the Patreon. subscribe to yeah. patreon and ask we'll the post. questions and then there you go velvet uh, rope and the, and, if, <laughs> and if you want to come in make sure you go to patreon.com slash robert kelly that's where we're gonna go right now if not subscribe dave thanks so much thank you for having me uh, and dates, your, plug dates your crew there thanks yeah what us. are your dates man you got some dates uh, here we go. Go right to davidtell.com and you can see my dates. All right, David, you do no, you have no uh, internet presence. You don't care. You have somebody to do it. No, which I yeah, no. It, I, I'm, 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 I keep eyes on it. You keep eyes on it. Yeah, this is a, you know, it's a, not. Do you a, respond? And, do you respond to fans? Yeah, we do. Oh, good. We sure we, do. We're, all right, yeah. good, man. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, what was going to say? Um, <laughs> I got a big comedy mothership coming up. Oh, so that's a great one coming that's up. A good that's one. I mean, tip of the hat to Rogan, man. That yeah, place is you're, sweet. You, you can't go though. Nobody can go to your comedy mothership. Why? Because it's all sold out. Oops. All right. <laughs> well, go to go Brea. back. To, go back to mine for a second. <laughs> yeah. uh, mine are not. So if hey. you couldn't get you couldn't get him. I'm going to be there this uh, the Saturday. I mean, keep scrolling because I can't read. Uh, uh, the fifth and the sixth. Up. I got a lot of great ones. I got uh, I got uh, side splitters coming up. Nice. I got uh, Poughkeepsie. I got Houston. I got Comedy Mothership. Poughkeepsie. I'm gonna be at RobertKellyLive.com. I got Lafayette Club three three seven. You played that. Poughkeepsie. Uh, Do you even like have to drive that? Can't you just walk from your house there? Yeah, no, <laughs> no. Go to. <laughs> it's only like forty minutes away. Oh, look at your merch! I yeah. love it. You want something? What do you want? Oh, dude, yeah, give me something. <laughs> I'll give you wow, a check great. spot. You want that? We should have talked about merch the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right, Robert. Go to comicrebels.com. Use code word ladybugs to get twenty percent off. There you go. Move on. We're going to go to Patreon. Thank you guys are the best fans in the world. We'll see you next time. On uh, you know what, dude. Oh, guys, plug your dates. Sorry. Uh, Max Marcus Comedy, all social media. I'll be at the Dojo of Comedy in Morris Plains, New Jersey on March 23rd and 28th. Follow me on Instagram at Danny Braff and follow Joe Russell at Instagram at, joke, at Jokes Russell and The Cheese Show on YouTube. And we'll see you next time on You Know What Dude podcast. You know what, dude? See you later. You've been listening to the YKWD podcast. Thanks for listening. Now go back to your shitty jobs. Shitty jobs. Shitty jobs.